all esteemed guests present here. I, Manisha Gupta, Assistant Professor of Physics, Government Science College, Raipur. It's my privilege to introduce Professor Anshuman Dalvi from Department of Physics, Bits Pilani, Rajasthan, for the technical session two. Mr. Dalvi completed his graduation from Government Polkar Science College, Indore. The master's degree from School of Physics, DA University, Indore. After that, he has completed PhD from IIT, Kanpur. His field of interest are in energy materials and storage devices, lithium and sodium ion batteries, supercapacitors, electrical transport, and condensed matter experimental physics. He has 40 international publications in his name, of which 10 are most recent, most impact in this international journal publication. Now, I invite Professor Dalvi to conduct the technical session too. I think I'll require permission to share my screen, right? Uh, yeah. Yes, sir, you are co host. You can share your screen. Sir, you can share your screen. Yeah, but I'm unable to do it because here we have the host disabled participant. So, what to do? How to do it? Yeah, now I can do it. Very nice. Just a minute, huh? Share. So, is it visible? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, there may be some see how, how it works. Let's see. Uh, all right, so. But sound is. Uh... What is that, sir? Uh, yes, yeah, sound is a little bit low. Low, is it? I think uh, because of the distance, uh, possibly name. I can. Ah, so is it fine if I speak now this way? Uh, because at this point of time, this is the only possibility with me. Uh, because yeah, so should I start speaking? Yes, sir. Yeah. Fine. So uh, anyway, if it is a little low, then also I'll be able to speak and I'll be able to tell you that what I do here and how the things move. All right. So the topic I have kept is at little research level because this is a uh, workshop and this workshop uh, as Mohanji has designed and uh, Professor Gupta and other people from outside uh, country are also participating. Other participants are also there. And I believe that most of them are oriented towards research. So I have planned to introduce to you people, not really on very fundamentals, but little applied part of my research. Uh, I'll not talk about much of the basics here, but I'll give you some idea about the research work, which is uh, in which I'm engaged in at present in Bits Pilani. So this is my research group here in Pilani. And you can see that uh, most of them are girls and only two boys who have contributed so far. And, uh, you know, this is, these are the list of publications in last uh, few years in our lab. The topic I have kept is on solid state supercapacitors. Uh, supercapacitors are already there in the market and people are working on this uh, application of supercapacitors in electric vehicles. They are working on 
various types of possible usage in other devices also making their combination with batteries and making some kind of hybrid devices so that we can look for a very proper energy storage uh, system in this uh, country in this world and uh, the most important objective is the energy storage uh, using combination of these batteries and supercapacitors that is what we are going to uh, look into this project most of the devices so far which are there in the market are uh, liquid based as all we know so all the lithium batteries the upcoming sodium ion batteries everywhere the liquid electrolyte is being used but liquids have some uh, drawbacks and therefore we have to look for uh, uh, you know substitution of liquid with some kind of solids some solid materials so that we can achieve high temperature stability we can achieve the low dimensional stability as well because of uh, various requirements of the electronic devices we have to go for the low dimensional systems also therefore solid state and solid state ionics and therefore role of physicist comes into the picture uh, professor verma he is doing excellent work in bilai and i have visited his lab two years back just before the lockdown and we you know, we were very happy to see that in limited resources what beautiful work can be done and so many people are being trained there in the theoretical aspects of the solid state ionics i am very happy to share our work which is also we started with limited resources but now we have sufficient things sufficient funds to do some kind of uh, uh, you know <clears throat> cutting edge research work all right so is the slide visible i am on the outline slide is it visible visible sir yeah thank you uh yeah so here uh, you know the efforts from 1960s are to replace the liquid electrolyte of the batteries and other energy storage devices by the solids and what is the advantage advantage is that uh, you will be able to get uh, you know uh, wide voltage stability you will be able to get uh, get rid of the corrosion kind of things you will be able to increase the shelf life you will be able to uh see uh, you know realize what you say low dimensional device micro batteries nano batteries you know uh, because your vlsi designs nowadays tend to the power nine number of transistors on one inch square of area so such kind of devices are coming up then the energy support to that device should also be of the similar dimensions so low dimension is very important thing and the high temperature application the liquid electrolytes which are being used in the devices are uh, liquid based i mean they they uh, that they are not thermally stable so if you go to lower temperatures they freeze if you go to higher temperature they evaporate or decompose so batteries will be spoiled therefore solid state so i'll talk about the solid state i'll talk about the issues which are related to solid state and then i'll come back quickly to the super capacitors and the work which we do here in pilani and uh, of course in the limited resources but whatever we do in pilani is something which can be done in india also in other labs also so it is an idea is to inspire people to work in this uh, interesting field of research where there are many vertices many interesting dimensions which can be achieved and many interesting success stories can be written in the near future so that with that idea let us begin with the understanding of ionic transport in solids so when you say a solid then you all this condensed matter physics the solid state physics kettle based course in the very chap first chapter we talk about ionic solids being zinc sulfide cesium chloride sodium chloride all these uh, have if you if you go the most uh, favorable most comfortable is the sodium chloride the salt which is there on in our table also A sodium chloride has a fcc structure huge packing 74% of the volume is occupied then the ionic transport is difficult when people you know developed in last 40 50 years various interesting structures inside the solid so that ionic transport can be made via some some tunnel like structures and we have such tunnel like structures possible using which we can do Uh, you can achieve very fast ionic solid and the ionic solid can be comparable nowadays to molten salts and aqueous solutions so as far as in grain conductivity is concerned then you have uh, nasicons garnets and uh, various other perovskites kind of materials where the conductivity is extremely high 
comparable to aqueous solutions, molten salts. But then it is about the grain boundary. So again, the solid solid interface. One of the grain and another grain when they are in contact, then they exhibit a poor conductivity. The iron, as long as it moves inside a grain, it is very comfortable to perform high conductivity, to give high conductivity. So bulk conductivity of these developed ionic compounds is very high. But when you go and cross the interface, you lose the conductivity because of the high grain boundary impedance. And that is the biggest problem for the application of ionic solids in the real energy devices. Because if you have large grain boundary impedance, then uh, there is an issue we cannot achieve high conductivity. The another issue is the interface, the electrode electrolyte interface. So even if we know what is P, how we make PN junction, then it is not that we have a P and we have a N and we join them and make a junction, not that way. PN junction essentially is in one semiconductor uh, single crystal. One side you grow the N, N type of impurity using diffusion, the other side using P and then you talk about PN junction. Now that is the PN junction where again, there is a potential barrier and all those things come. But here we talk about two solids coming to each other, making an interface. And through that interface, we expect a fast ionic transport without any potential barrier. So there is a challenge. So you have a challenge of wettability, use energy barrier, poor junction, uh, junction for the sense that you cannot utilize the uh, complete surface area. Both the surface, uh, surfaces have their own natural roughness and uh, that is a problem. Then there is a, another issue, the thermal expansion. Uh, thermal expansion coefficient, if suppose you want to go high temperature, then different materials will have different thermal expansion coefficients. And one of the material will expand more, another one will be expanding less. And that also is a reason for the poor uh, uh, electrode electrolyte interface because of uh, various uh, reasons, the energy inside the solid electrolyte, inside the electrolyte may increase uh, uh, and those things may cause a poor uh, interface again. So interface is one of the important things on which all the people, solid state INX people, uh, the people who want to use the electrolytes, solid electrolytes for the battery are working actually. Okay, one of the interesting material is Nasicon, sodium superionic conductor, which was discovery in 19, late 70s. Late 70s discovery is Nasicon. But then, uh, you know, what is this structure? Here we talk about. Hello. Am I audible, Monji? This is fine. Very awaz are you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, thik. All right. So you talk about, you know, such, such kind of skeletons which should be prepared. For example, this titanium octahedral and phosphate tetrahedral, when they are made, uh, when they are joining the corners, then there is a lot of spare free space inside. And this is a three-dimensional tunnel-like structure. And now it is possible to, you know, think about this such a three-dimensional tunnel-like structure in lithium systems also. In uh, garnets also a very similar thing happens whenever the tetrahedra, octahedra share the corner rather than sharing the surfaces, the faces, then we see that we are able to achieve space inside the solid and using that space, ionic transport is possible. Three-dimensional it is possible. So this is one of the important material and this material is a competitor if you see uh, for the future batteries, what will happen after 1930s People are predicting that it will be a, a century for solid state ionic. And one of the competitors will be Garnet, another will be the Nasicon, and third one will be the perovskite. That is what people talk about. There will be other challenging new materials which will come up in future. All right. So one of the another competitor or one of the most important uh, you know, um, uh, choice, you can say, where a solid solid interface can be established is polymer. A lot of work on solid polymer electrolyte has been done by Professor Ravinder Gupta ji and uh, you know, of course Varma ji and Professor Agrawal's group there. And solid polymer electrolyte still is one of the fascinating material for the INX community. And what happens in solid, solid polymer electrolyte is and why it is an important choice is because if you take about two contexts of the solids, then polymer is the best choice to 
हैव ए स्मूथ कॉन्टेक्ट एट द इंटरफेस पॉलीमर का जो सॉलिड के साथ कॉन्टेक्ट है दैट कैन बी द इजीएस्ट एंड स्मूथेस्ट कॉन्टेक्ट एज पर एज द सॉलिड्स आर कंसर्न आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट द जेल एट एट द मोमेंट ओनली सॉलिड पॉलीमर इलेक्ट्रोलाइट व्हिच विल बी लिक्विड फ्री what happens here you were you you have a, you know a, a polymer then there is there are certain amorphous regions in the polymer if you keep on adding salt then these amorphous regions increase either their number will increase or their volume will increase and there will be a connectivity in the uh, amorphous regions and finally the ion chain coupling mechanism leads to the ionic transport here so lithium ions or sodium ion based polymers are there but the conductivity is limited because of the coupling mechanism lithium ion has to couple with the uh, chains and this coupling doesn't provide a fast ionic power transport so you have to break the coupling and do some kind of engineering inside this material so that this lithium ions can be freely moving like tunnels inside the polymer and the polymer will be able to provide a good interface so now I think I lost the connection, is it? Am I there now? Again? Yes, uh, connected. This could be okay. I think net chala gaya tha. Right. So now you have now new materials where inside the ceramic particles can also support the ionic transport either by polymer ceramic interface or by by providing providing pathways to their own grains also. Now a lot of mechanism people are thinking about that how the ionic transport is happening whether through the grains of the ceramics or or through the interface of the polymer ceramic. you can put polymer in ceramic you can put ceramic in polymer and make a huge compositional variation range now and now since they have developed then the conductivity has reached to a very high value and this high value of conductivity is above about 10 to the power minus 4 in sodium as well as lithium systems so we can think about preparing a proper or using them in various uh, types of devices now so that is the interesting thing on which we have been working that we are you know taking the polymer and making their compositions with these nasicons and taking the nasicons and their compositions and very be the meeting chal rahi hai baad mein baat karenge taking the nasicons and making their uh, composition with ionic liquids also this is also very interesting way of enhancing the conductivity by you know uh, using some small amount of uh, little amount of ionic liquid all these kinds of things are giving us interesting electrolytes nowadays where we can see the role of electrolyte in the performance of the device all right now i come back to the real point the super capacitors so super capacitors are the materials are the are the devices which are uh, you know uh, considered uh, uh, you know uh, something which is going to complement the batteries in the future in the present also it is happening very nicely happening super capacitors means they are the fast charging discharging devices they can deliver huge amount of power in a very small amount of time because uh, normally the super capacitors will have a uh, uh, smaller area uh, small, smaller discharge time uh, so you are not limited to the chemical reactions which are happening in the batteries super capacitors are using this uh, electrostatic phenomena of the charge storage which our capacitors are fast same thing we are just applying here and apply using the nano technology to make some kind of super capacitors some of some kind of capacitors which are treated or which are called super capacitors so let us talk about super capacitor little bit so first of all super capacitor is not to compete with the battery but it is to complement complement the battery so if uh, for a ordinary person ordinary means ordinary in the sense that a new person in this field 
uh, a new learner, battery is like a marathon runner because the battery can provide a, uh, you know, can store a huge amount of uh, energy and they, that energy can be delivered for a very long time. Because the outcome of the energy is controlled by, is dictated by the chemical reaction of the battery. Chemical reaction will have a time constant, that much time it will take and it will deliver. Yes, thank you. So here we have uh, supercapacitors, we which we talk like a marathon, uh, which will talk like a you know hundred meter runner, bolte, sprinter, like Hussein Bolt. So he can deliver his complete energy in 10 seconds, less than 10 seconds, and, and super performance. So the way uh, Hussein Bolt runs, you can say, is like a delivering huge current from a device. And the way uh, you need the uh, Kipchoze runs, is like a 42 kilometers run, slow running, but a steady running, and it is uh, useful, a small amount of current for a very large time. So supercapacitor means large amount of current in a very small time. Battery means a steady and small current for long, long, long time. Both have their importances, but uh, there are places where you need large current in small time. For example, a vehicle when it is climbing and, and climb there, then you have to accelerate. If it is not having any other source, then you have only battery. Battery can provide only a uh, stable uh, voltage outcome, current outcome. So there you use supercapacitors, suddenly huge amount of current it can supply, and then you can climb uh, climb the incline plane, the pull or whatever. And uh, here we talk about the Ragon plot, where when we compare specific energy and specific power. So energy means uh, you see how much uh, uh, you can, uh, how much you can deliver but you can deliver in large uh, amounts of times. And power means instant. Power means it's about current. Our energy divided by time is power. So you have to see that uh, you, you, uh, you deliver it, it for a very long time. Then you talk about energy. And when you want to deliver energy in a very small time, then you talk about power. The ideal situation would be devices which will have high specific energy and high specific power. And that is what the interest of the scientific community. But when you talk about energy, then that is higher for batteries and batteries will have smaller power outcome. And we talk, when you talk about supercapacitors, then supercapacitor has very large power outcome, but very small energy they can have. So therefore, uh, they both of them are important and their combinations in the future are going to dictate the direction of the uh, energy devices. Uh, in the future. And it is an open field in which now many, many people are working in India and in abroad also. This is a, a simple slide on supercapacitors. You talk about double layer supercapacitor, then hybrids, then pseudo capacitors. Pseudo capacitors will have some kind of surface chemical reactions also. And electric double layers will have a pure electrostatic uh, phenomena of energy storage. I'll talk about today's lecture. In today's lecture, the work on electric double layer only. All right. What happens in a normal capacitor? You have capacitor uh, capacity is given by epsilon zero A upon D. Now, how to increase the capacity by either by increasing the area. If you increase the area, then you can increase the capacity or you can decrease the separation between the plates and you can increase the capacity or you can in, in, introduce some kind of dielectric material inside the capacitor where uh, the dielectric uh, will reduce the potential, therefore it will enhance the capacity, all right? So these are the two, three methods by which normal capacitors work. And if you can see overall the, from the uh, positive to negative potential, there is a gradual fall of the potential, positive uh, plate to the negative plate. And uh, you say gradient of uh, this one is the uh, potential is the electric field. Electric lines of forces are parallel everywhere. You know, sigma upon epsilon zero is the electric field there. And the energy is stored in the electric field here. Now, as I said, you have a limitation. You cannot make capacitors of the size of your home uh, because area you have to increase. You cannot decrease the distance also to a very significant because there will be an issue 
corresponding to how close the two bank plates can come. You have to do now a new business which is called the nanotechnology. You have to look for those materials which are nano materials, which can be introduced or which can be there at the interface and play the role of larger surface area. At the same time, the interface can be decreased by again double layer. So I'll show you what is that double layer. This is the supercapacitor, a typical supercapacitor. And here, what happens is in between, instead of a dielectric, we have a liquid electrolyte. I am getting some distance. Someone is speaking, so can you mute, please? Yes. So, in, in between the two plates, you have liquid electrolyte. All right. And uh, now you give a potential. So one plate will become positive, and another plate will become negative. What happens? If you will have some kind of uh, molecules, neutral molecules, those species will come. And right now, at the very first instant, they will come and get adsorbed on the surface. This adsorption is a chemical phenomenon. It's a chemical requirement of the electrode to have some kind of uh, adsorbed molecule. So on the adsorbed molecule, now the moving charges will come. The uh, electrostatic requirement has to be fulfilled. So first requirement is the adsorption. Second requirement is the electrostatic interaction. So these are the mobile charges, the ones in the center. They will come and they will form two capacitors at the interface. So one capacitor is one near the positive plate. Another capacitor is near the negative plate. And you have ensured that the surface area is very high. For example, 1000 meters per gram. For example, 1000 meters per gram. And uh, you see that uh, this kind of surface area doesn't require no real big space, but at the nano level, you are able to generate that surface area. Now we bring them, uh, then what is the model? We have uh, two capacitors on both the sides, and sometimes you can talk about some small resistance in between. The normal capacitor will have a insulating material in between, and here you will have a conducting liquid in between. So that is a supercapacitor which comes. Now this is purely because of the electrostatic interaction. So if the electrostatic interaction is there, then the charges are being pulled from the liquid and they are, they are there at the interface. When you discharge, then whole charges now will be going back because surface area is large. So large number of charges are able to accumulate there. And if the, that is the thing then, because there is no chemical reaction involved, soon you will be able to discharge or take out all the charges in no time, in quick time. So the voltage profile is like huge potential drop at the interface uh, in the double layer. This, these are also called sometimes the Helmholtz double layers. And in between, there is almost no potential drop. So though there is no electric field also in between. So everything you have to is happening sharply at the interface. A large potential drop at the interface leads to a huge electric field also at the interface. And finally, what happens is only interfacial phenomena remains in between only job of the electrolyte is to provide the ions whenever they are required. So they are going by the diffusion mechanism and coming back to the electrolyte by diffusion mechanism. And as such, there is no, uh, nothing else is happening. So electrolytes um, role is to provide free ions and how fast the electrolyte can provide the ions depends upon the conductivity of the electrolyte. So, so far this is happening uh, using a typical liquid electrolyte. And now, for the last four or five years, people have been trying for solid electrolytes and they are used in supercapacitors. I'm talking about that now after some time. So this is kind of adsorption phenomena. When you talk about Helmholtz layer, the first layer is of the inert molecules. The second layer is the solvated ions uh, and the solvated ions are actually the charges, free charges, mobile ions in the liquid. And this uh, double layer, so double layer doesn't mean both side layer. Double layer means in, on one side you have two layers on another side, you have two layers. So in a one capacitor, you have two capacitors at the interface. So because you have two interfaces, so two capacitors are there. So that is the real model of your uh, super capacitor. The requirement is huge surface area. So you have to go for 1,000 to 2,000 meters square per gram kind of surface area. This, this is already I have discussed. And um, you have to create the interface very properly. If you are able to create the interface, then you are able to really 
get a very high capacity and when the capacity is very high then you will be able to discharge huge amount of current in very small time so you know batteries uh, are charged and discharged very slowly because they'll need time to charge they'll need time to complete discharge but super capacitors can be you know charged very fast in in few seconds it can be charged to a full loading and it can be discharged also to a full loading and this process if you do it very high currents then you know we can draw huge currents in no time that is the beauty of the supercapacitor so this is the idea that you have to use this kind of sur high surface area material activated material activated materials means it has large surface area and the surface is active to take some part somewhere for the chemical reactions or for the adsorption process so that that is what we say activated carbon now this activated carbon nowadays available everywhere at least 1000 meter square per gram activated carbon you can get in uh, your uh, that semi permeable membrane based uh, uh, aqua guard uh, uh, drinking water machine right so there are, that is also available cheaply nowadays but if you want to go for more high surface area it is little costly all right so now the thing is we have to go for liquid free supercapacitors that is the idea because it is in parallel to the liquid free solid state batteries let liquid free batteries so you are looking for solid electrolytes for the batteries so we are also looking for solid electrolyte for the supercapacitors so there is a huge advantage as i have mentioned for something which is liquid free and therefore we would like to go for solid state devices in parallel to solid state batteries we talk about solid state supercapacitors quote unquote we say all solid state supercapacitors all solid state means no liquid at all there should not be any role for liquid inside only solid interface solid electrolyte and solid uh, uh, what do you say uh, solid electrodes also and uh, therefore there is a huge possibility for people like physicists like me and uh, our other colleagues here they can contribute because we understand chemistry little you know at at a little lower level but we understand physics well that where to apply physics what is happening how to understand the mechanisms there we can contribute very nicely and if uh, less chemistry is there then we can certainly go for a very good understanding of uh, the future devices also we can predict that what best we can do out of these ones using computational techniques as uh, professor verma is doing and uh, using the sophisticated experimental techniques and uh, uh, you know con with continuous exchange between theoreticians and experimentalists we can design new things now i will tell you in next 25 minutes story of my work what we do here so we are talking about you know some kind of uh, as i i introduced that we are developing initially for last 10 years we were we were uh, actually developing polymer ionic conductors where uh, ceramics are added in the polymer ceramic means the ion conducting materials are added to the polymer and if they are added to the polymer being a physicist i was studying very systematically that what are the electrical transport uh, uh, possibilities what is the mechanism so using various techniques like uh, x ray absorption spectroscopy and uh, high temperature x ray and many other things we used Uh, and using conductive structure correlation we try to understand the mechanism of electrical transport in those materials and later on after getting the understanding of mechanism when we found that uh, the conductivity can be enhanced to a much larger extent for example 10 to the power minus 3 to minus 4 then such materials can be used for devices also so on, on the one side we were trying for batteries on the other hand we were trying for the super capacitors and at the moment my focus is on super capacitors because it is uh, you know it gives quick results actually batteries need require a lot of huge investment and that much money in india no researcher can claim to have uh, consistently that is very important you can get one project but nobody knows will get another project or not it's a huge competition so you should do whatever consistently you can do in limited resources you can do so what you do is that uh, here we use uh, we also develop uh, activated carbon so activated carbon we coat on uh, graphite using some uh, simple doctor blade technique and uh, using that when the graphite is coated with activated carbon simple job you put your polymer film in between 
and uh, this technique we developed that do a lamination hot roll lamination so when you do lamination then instantly the lamination layers will be going above the melting point and then they will be cooled also so when okay. the melting point is more little the material goes little above the melting point then the interface is established smoothly that idea we started with this uh, solid state supercapacitors where a solid, uh, solid polymer electrolyte film was used and it was in um, between activated carbon graphite uh, which is coated with activated carbon and now of course we are uh, working on pseudo also but today's job is to tell you that uh, what are the things which we have done all right in supercapacitors these are the basic uh, fundamental characterization parameters which people talk about so one is the capacitance in battery we talk about capacity but here we talk about capacitance how much capacitance it has uh, then we talk about capacitance we, the same um, understanding whatever we have there all right in farads we have to say but we have to report in terms of farads per gram that means now specific capacitance uh, capacitance specific to the mass so specific capacitance people talk uh, then they talk about the coulombic efficiency that means whether the charging and discharging time are same or different so if the discharging is taking large time and charging is taking very small time that is also uh, not good you have to see that uh, this efficiency is near 100% that means almost discharging and charging time should be small so otherwise uh, this will be a problem that we will not be able to uh, get a good value of uh, this one all right the second thing is the energy and the now this is called specific energy again energy with respect to the mass so that same formula 1 by 2 cv square but with respect to the mass mass of activated carbon on electrode some people report with respect to the total mass some people report with respect to the activated carbon which is there on a single mass but normally a good practice is that for the energy and power one should may mention with respect to the mass of the device whereas uh, specific capacitance is a electrode property so it should be reported with respect to mass of the electrode fine so now now i'll go quickly this is the because electrolyte characterization all of you are familiar so you make the film then see the electrical conductivity try to see that what is the temperature where it reaches a high conductivity and after that uh, you work on that temperature no harm in going at little higher temperatures so we were actually working on little bit above 40 degrees initially but now we have developed some other which which is being used even at minus 10 degrees also so here you can see that uh, if uh, the very first characterization people do is the cyclic voltmetry and if the cyclic voltmetry is like a of a rectangular shape then we say that uh, it's a good capacitor you know charging and saturation discharging and saturation immediate discharging and saturation so this makes a complete box like structure if the structure is box like and it is featureless then we say it's a it's a process where there is no chemical reaction is involved some peaks are coming or dips are coming that means chemical reaction is also happening so if they are not coming then we say it is a pure electric double layer kind of behavior now this is the coal core or the nyquist plot normally if you measure coal core plot for a semi uh, for a normal ionic conductor polymer electrolyte then you get a semi circle followed by a straight line that is corresponding to bulk and the interface but here i already told that the bulk effect will not be seen here because there is no roll of bulk it's only only interface which is coming and that is visible here when you have the vertical lines in the nyquist plot which are seen here in this plot so i'm just giving you a flavor that what kind of things should be called a supercapacitor say vertical line without any predominant semi circle is coming then we will say that this is a supercapacitor and uh, then you can compare that uh, how the other compositions were making the supercapacitor effect and uh, oh, then we find that you know for a optimized composition where salt content in the electrolyte and the nasicon content in the electrolyte is good then that was leading to a large value of capacitance then the continuous charging disper discharging profiles up to 16000 cycles could be worked out and uh, we could see that uh, after the cycling what is the interface the solid solid interface after the cycling is uh, seen here and it's quite intact after the cycling that is also there this is these are the charging discharging curves 
So you charge and then you discharge and you see that how much time it takes. These are called galvanostatic charging discharging cycles. All right. Then there was another approach when we said that uh, when you have large amount of ceramics, ceramics, you are reducing the amount of polymer and making a supercapacitor only based on ceramics. Now this is one of the important thing because finally the ceramics are going to be playing role in batteries and supercapacitors. This concept actually because polymer will also have a degradation with higher temperature. So you in a some way after, after some time you would like to get rid of polymer also from this one. So slowly, slowly if you remove polymer from your matrix of the electrolyte, that means you are having you are saying that you are actually instead of adding ceramic nanoparticles to the polymer, now you have added polymer to the ceramic. So when polymer is added to the ceramic, electrical transport was dramatically very high because now this also we have you know studied that what is the fundamental of this one. So a lot of work was already done on the fundamental ideas that how the electrical transport is taking place when polymer is added to the ceramic. That means polymer goes and ideally sits between the grains. That means it is actually acting like a coupling agent between the uh, ceramic grains. So it is facilitating the intergrain transport there. And the conductivity reaches to more than 10 to the power minus 4 ohm inverse centimeter inverse in the same polymer film, which was uh, shown here. So this is the ceramic and polymer type of film. So using it, you know, simply first you do it. Now here we have used some ball milling also. This ball milling is required to mix the ceramic particles with polymer very properly. So if you just do it in a pestle motor or in a magnetic stirrer, it will not work. You have to do using a proper ball mill and using a ball mill, you, if you do it, then this is giving very good results. And these are the ceramic films actually. These are the predominant ceramic sheets where a little amount of polymer is added. All right, so this is uh, with the polymer and ceramic approach also we have seen, uh, shown that uh, it shows a very interesting result. Now this kind of potential versus capacitance cycles, if they are very symmetric, then we say high Coulombic efficiency is seen. So uh, high Coulombic efficiency is very much required. That means the charging time and discharging time should be always almost same. And the final discharge curves also show more than 1000 watt per kilogram of power here and reasonable amount of energy uh, in the solid state. The if you draw it now, now this solid solid interface still plays an important role here. So if you draw a current, uh, a large current, then there is a polarization effect which happens there. This is a nature, right? We have to understand the nature. Solid solid interface will always have some kind of polarization because ions when they go try to cross the interface or play some role at the interface. If they are moving very fast, then they will polarize and they they will have their own electric field. And that is something which should be seen. And uh, normally we observe that for low discharge current, polarization effect happens, and we get a very stable cycling. But if you do it for higher higher ones, then there is some issue and the capacity falls. At the same time, you also see that this can be improved. So yeah, one more role is the role of anions. So in batteries, we have seen that only cations should play a role. The cation takes part in the chemical reaction, be it sodium or lithium. But in supercapacitors, both the ions play a role here. All right. Anions and cations both have to play a role. One electrode anion is going to play the role, and another electrode of the geometry, you have cations going to play a role. So you have to, you know, be very careful in choosing the ions. In the batteries, when you say you say take a bigger anion. So bigger anion is going to help you because that will promote a single ion electrical transport. Bigger ion will stuck somewhere. But in supercapacitors, you have to say that you have to choose a smaller ion. Of course, it should not chemically react and uh, subject to other conditions. But this uh, anions, uh, they are smaller in nature. They are uh, uh, showing better results. So you, we see that if you have uh, lithium chlorate, which is the smallest cation, uh, it will which has a smallest cation, it will perform better. It will show a good result. All right. Third issue is the sodium ion systems also. So this is uh, true for uh, sodium ion also that we can prepare the all solid state supercapacitors. And the very similar uh, way method we have used, but here the added particle is nasicon. This is called <coughs> NZSP. 
So NZSP is a nostron which was uh, John Goodenough's discovery, and uh, he got Nobel Prize for this, uh, you know, electrode development along with the contribution to the solid state ionics also. And uh, here, using these nasicons, we could achieve very high ionic conductivity in sodium ion-based uh, polymer electrolytes. And these are solid polymer electrolytes. I'm repeatedly saying that these are not gels. They do not have any liquid content at all. And uh, these can be used nicely, again, in such devices. So that uh, sodium ion supercapacitors were also uh, developed and their cycling was tested uh, very nicely. Uh, they are in fact a nice stability is seen for sodium uh, based supercapacitors up to 10,000 cycles. Our recent, recent results have shown uh, that uh, you know uh, there is no chemical reaction which takes place, there is a good stability of a uh, voltage. For example, here potential versus cycle number, you see a good stability, it doesn't fall actually. And potential versus CS at different cycles also show a very good uh, Coulombic efficiency. Stable cycling, and we can also see that uh, appreciable capacitance and high energy density also is seen. Uh, and Nasicon content plays an important role here. That is what is the message which comes here. Last topic, five minutes more I'll take and I'll be winding up. Interface is still important and solid solid interface is uh, something which requires more understanding, more, uh, you know, physics and more, uh, you know, support from the theoretical input also. And uh, you have to play with this interface. So one of the ways people do at the interface is by incorporating some kind of butter layer now, all right? The way you put butter between two braid slides and uh, braids ke beech mein you put butter, usko laga dete hain, chipak jayega. That way, we nowadays people are using various butter layers uh, between a electrode and electrolyte. Using two solid electrolyte and electrode, electrode ko chipka na hai, so you have to use good butter layer. Iska reason kya hai? Reason is that, uh, as I have shown schematically in this picture, the activated carbon is unable to be utilized very properly when you have a solid solid interface. Why? Because still, wherever the polymer is able to go, that place is, is able to reach. But then there are many uh, holes and pores where uh, solid electrolyte cannot reach the way liquid used to reach. So you have to you have to find a way that how the effective area of the activated carbon can be utilized without using the liquid. Now here, the butter layer should not have liquid. If you put a drop of ionic liquid, suppose you put a little bit of ionic liquid in between and say it is a butter layer, fine, very good interface. But no, no, we don't want to do that at this point of time. We want to say that no, uh, what is the best possible effective use of solids uh, being uh, a physicist, we should explore the nature. So what we did is prepared the electrodes using some part of uh, that polymer, which was also there in the electrolyte. So what happens, this some polymer is there in the electrolyte, some polymer is also there in the electrode. So now it makes a friendly business between these two. It makes a good uh, uh, bridging uh, behavior, good coupling between the electrodes and electrolyte. And this coupling uh, behavior can be further improved by you know changing the content of the polymer. And this is now a new area in which one can think about that if polymer goes in the activated carbon material, what happens? So here you can see in this, this uh, SAM diagram, the uh, polymer uh, electrolyte is going in this one, in this, uh, in the pores of the activated carbon. So it goes there, then it is also having salt. That means it is able to make a tunnel for the salt ions to go into the pores of the activated carbon. That is the beauty of this one. This And this uh, effect was uh, very dramatic in providing interesting properties, uh, stability of the solid, uh, this uh, all solid state supercapacitors. So if the properties could be further improved. But I'm, I'm not saying that here, it's a conclusive statement. And many more studies are required to be completed. Uh, many, many understandings have to be developed here. It's a very preliminary result we reported uh, in uh, this journal, Batteries. And we said that, you know, this can be further improved. We can, uh, you know, make the process more faster. We can 
make the process more stable. The cycling performance becomes stable if the polymer goes into the electrode. A very honest and simple work which we presented there was appreciated and with some very positive remarks that a uh, lot more can be done in these directions and we are trying to do this. All right, so my final slide now. So what is that we have done? We have developed uh, all solid state supercapacitors using polymer electrolyte films, which are those films? These are the polymer electrolyte films which are hybrids in nature. They are added with activated carbon. Uh, uh, they, are, they are added with uh, you know some kind of ceramic fillers, which are iron conducting fillers in nature, like nafcons, garnets, all these things we are trying. Uh, all all sorts of uh, you know sodium and lithium and fast ionic solids we are adding and different students are working and contributing in that direction. This is the beginning of the work, and we have some properties which are better than the gels also. When I say better than the gels, I don't want to underestimate the contribution of those who are working on gel polymers for years. I have to say that there are many many advantages of uh, using the gels even now. Uh, you can make flexible devices you, because, uh, uh, you, I mean, gels are also extreme, you know, but, but then you have to, you know, progress now. 20 years gels have been be, are being used for last 20, 25 years in the like, double layer capacitors. Now we should go and see the effect of solid polymer electrolytes also. And then we will see the effect of uh, pure solids. So we are also trying for a pure ceramic and its contact with pure activated carbon using different ways, different techniques. So interface has to be improved and uh, these power devices are the way all solid state batteries are also low power devices now. They are also low power devices now. We have to be honest in saying that it is a nature. You can't challenge the nature beyond its uh, limits, but we have to try to extract the best out of it. Possibly the large surface area can use uh, uh, you give better results. Possibly the pseudo capacitance uh, or, or behavior will also be very interesting here. We are working on pseudo capacitors also, and we are also working on the hybrid capacitors using these two. More emphasis is on the understanding physics behind the processes because students should be trained in the physics behind the processes. The fabrication part can be learned uh, whenever they go to any big lab but the understanding and the training of how the physics and chemistry of the material should be looked into and understood. How an authority can be developed on a particular scientific idea is more important for us who sit in universities and do. We do patent, have patents, but our interest is more towards training the people and take, taking them to the next level and imparting this knowledge, whatever we have received from our seniors to the next generation. With that idea, I am working here. So thank you very much for your understanding and uh, precious time. I'll be very happy to answer questions if, we, if any, there are any questions. Now, now the session is open for question and answer. It's online now. I have one question. Yeah, though you are you are working to develop a super super is it there any work is going on to how we store the electricity? There is a lightning, and is it possible to store that energy because this is a tremendous amount of energy? If that we store, we can use it in domestic purpose also. So is it any, any research is going on in this field? Uh, I could partially listen to your question because voice was shaky. What was the initial part of your question? Could you please repeat? Uh, I just I have a question that uh, is it any device or a super uh, capacitor developed to the lightning energy? Lightning energy? <laughs> वो तो हमारा बेंजामिन फ्रैंकलिन वाला एक्सपेरिमेंट अगर आपको याद हो उन्होंने काइट लगा के और आज एल्कोहल जार राइट वी यूज्ड टू स्टैंडर्ड सो या आई मीन क्या मैम करें अरे क्या 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 हो रहा है समझाओ क्या स्पीकर पे था क्या कैन आई स्पीक मिक्सर डीप माला 
yeah so hello am i audible yeah 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 so me keh raha hu ki yes that, so we you know that is uh, quite ambitious to talk about you know uh, getting sudden uh, energy and being storing it to a place this has people have been trying for 400 500 years using that leidens jar experiment when benjamin benjamin franklin used a kite and you know that using that kite he tried to collect that uh, you know uh, lightning into a jar so that energy to in a jar that was the capacitor actually which was called leidens jar if you remember and many people died in such experiments you know people sacrificed their life for uh, such experiments right now the idea is that to use this solar energy very effectively everywhere particularly we sitting in india have huge radiance of uh, solar energy so if the solar energy falls on our uh, roofs and our places like myself sitting in rajasthan aap log mp mein hain we have uh, you know almost that uh, uh, good intensity almost vertical lines are falling here and uh, solar panel power should be generated that is number 1 and then that solar power whatever is generated should be should be effectively used and stored using super capacitors and batteries so you can have uh, some solar cars where you can have combination of batteries and super capacitors with uh, solar energy we can have uh, effectively solar grids micro grids where we can talk about uh, generating the power using the solar energy and storing the power in battery and super capacitors are their combinations so all these uh, you know non conventional energy sources which are there they should be used for generating the energy and uh, and these electrochemical energy storage uh, devices can be used for storing the energy this should be tried and in fact we have in india since 2008 uh, the solar energy mission and after 2016 using the niti ayog uh, niti ayog's uh, work on energy storage mission so we would like to you know india would like to be you know using these uh, things very properly and by 2030 we will have 75% of our market to be captured by the electric vehicles so that is the idea but of course the uh, the question which you asked is uh, quite ambitious that a sudden energy which falls can be can it be stored to the device well such a huge energy will have huge you know million electron volts of energy and that energy can can't be stored at one small place because every material will have its own uh, uh, you know uh, melting point and you know thermal stability so such huge energy should be disseminated and then can be stored on smaller and smaller uh, devices possibly in future those things can be planned thank you sir thank you matlab there are uh, uh, people are thinking to i uh, store the natural energy form of the energy solar energy in, uh, in case of the capacitor uh, now uh, after some time maybe people uh, de- degenerated uh, super capacitor that is store a higher en- amount of energy natural energy and that we will use in future thank you thank you very much sir thank you thank you so much sir and so on dalvi sir for your enlightening lecture on solid state super capacitor fundamental fabrication strategies and challenges this talk will surely motivate participants on this exciting field in future thanks thanks once again sir thank you very much and uh, my regards to professor verma gupta ji ravindra ji kaise hain aap aapke <laughs> bahut acha thank you so much nice start thank you sir thank you very much bahut badhiya tha sir samajh aa gaya bahut dinon ke baad dinon ke baad aapko sunne ka mauka mila thanks to the organizers really it is a good uh, we are meeting together it's yes, very nice sir and i have seen uh, mohan ji's uh, work and his lab and the passion in a very small limited resources he has you know uh, kind of work he is publishing and he is very consistent in publishing public you know good quality papers to so, humko yeah. ye bahut motivating lagta hai ki hum log yahan par hai aur uh, hum log jis tarah se matlab aapke group ne mujhe bahut madad kiya hai professor i very high regards for your guide uh, rakesh agrawal sir unhone humko 
जब मैं यहाँ पर अपना लैब छोटा सा शुरू कर रहा था तो आप सभी लोगों के गाइडेंस से हमने वो इंस्ट्रूमेंट करना शुरू किया जो छोटी जगह में हम लोग ले सकते थे उस लिमिटेड बजट में सो आई हैव वेरी हाई रिजार्ट फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू हु रियली कंट्रीब्यूटेड एंड वेरी कंसिस्टेंट वर्क और सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट ये कि आप लोगों के जो पेपर्स हैं वो बहुत यानी फंडामेंटल वर्क पर होते हैं उसमें समझने के लिए बहुत कुछ होता है मतलब ए न्यू रिसर्च शुड फॉलो फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई आई वुड से प्रोफेसर रविंद्र गुप्ता जी का एक वो जो रिव्यू आर्टिकल है बहुत अच्छा रिव्यू आर्टिकल पे जो लिखा है आई ऑलवेज गिव टू माई पी एच डी स्टूडेंट दैट यू प्लीज रीड दिस थिंग बिकॉज दिस दिस इज ए कंसोलिडेशन ऑफ You know, all sorts of good work in this field. So, state पूरा है। बहुत अच्छा लगता है और और ये भी कि अभी तक हम सारे लोगों ने को छोड़ा नहीं है क्योंकि लोग फ्रस्ट्रेट होके लिक्विड में घुस रहे हैं आई आई वुड लाइक टू सी दैट वी स्टिल कंटिन्यू ऑन सॉलिड स्टेट एंड जस्टिफाई अवर प्रेजेंस बींग मुझे लगता है थैंक यू सर मेरे तरफ से भी और कमेटी की तरफ से तो है ये